So let's just be a little bit more formal about this, just um, to tie it together. So a hidden Markov model, or HMM, defines a probability distribution over a sequence of states and output observations. So your output sequence, um, I would denote as x1 to t, and that's, for example, the words that I see. And then um, what lies underneath it is a hidden state sequence, or it's often hidden. And I'm going to denote that as z0, that's my very, very first state. z1 is my first state. And then I go on up to zt, which is my almost last state. And then zt plus 1 is my very, very, very last state. That will make sense in a, in a second. And in our little example, this might be your uh, parts of speech tags. And so you can represent uh, a hidden Markov model. I've said this already as um, a directed graphical model, as in this case, where you start in your very, very first state. Then you go to your um, um, almost first state. You generate your words, for example. You go to the second state based on where you, where you before, you generate the second word and so on until you reach the end of the sentence. There are two special states in, in the way that I define HMMs. The very, very first state and the very, very last state. The first state is always the start of a sequence symbol and the very last state is always the end of a um, sequence symbol. And I label this state as state zero always and the very, very last um, state at time step t plus 1, that would be state k plus 1. Okay. So if we, have cap if we have capital K states, state 0 is my start state and state k plus 1 is my end state. And that just helps you to define the mathematics um, somewhat more easily. These two states are special. They're called non-emitting states because they don't kick out anything if, you're, if you go into those, um, into those states. Here's another question. Why are these things shaded? And uh, what does that tell you about a graphical model? Okay, so if they're shaded, that means that I've actually seen these things. And now you can see on the hidden Markov model why it's called a hidden Markov model. Because in most cases, the state sequence is actually unobserved. I don't know the states inside. But what I see is my observations, my words. Or if it's a speech recognition, um, thing then I observe these little frequency vectors. Maybe I should say this so I denote the output sequence as vectors because you can use hidden Markov models for things like part of speech tagging in which case x1, x2 and so on would be words but you can also use it to model continuous stuff. Okay so in speech recognition or maybe in speech synthesis where you're actually generating a little um, sequence of frequency vectors then each one of these x1, x2 up to xt would actually be a little vector representing the frequency content within a little small part of speech. Okay? And it's pretty cool that you can use one model for both discrete and continuous stuff. But in the notes what I will do is I will denote it as vectors just because that's a slightly more general case. Okay, everyone happy on the inside? Formally, we've got this set of states, state 0, state 1, state 2 up to state k plus 1. Quick test, what's state zero? Start of sentence, spot on. And k plus one, end of sentence. If I want to generate from this model, I need to know the probabilities. And I, there's basically two sets of pro probabilities that I need to know. The transition probabilities, which tells me how to go from one state to another. And then something called the emission distribution or the emission probabilities, which tells me, given that I'm in a current state, how do I actually generate something from this state? The transition probabilities, I will just denote them as capital A, and it's really a little matrix which tells you how to go from state I to state J. The emission distribution, the thing that tells me how I output something if, am I, if I'm in a given state, that depends a little bit on the problem. Okay? If we're doing part of speech tagging, then the emission distribution would be some categorical distribution. right? A little hundred-sided dice that tells me the probabilities for each of, of these things. When I'm doing speech synthesis, then the emission distribution is actually something continuous that tells me if I'm in this state, how do I actually generate a continuous vector from this state? And you would have to decide on what distribution you use. Maybe you use a Gaussian or a Gaussian mixture model for that state in order to generate some continuous thing from that. Okay, So that will 
um, change a little bit. But those are the two sets of probabilities that you need, or the two sets of distributions. You need transition probabilities, and then you need the set of emission distributions that tells me what happens in a specific state. And what I will do is the emission distributions, I'll just use this little phi symbol for the emission distribution parameters and capital A for the transition probabilities. Let's just make that a little bit concrete very, very quickly. So for our parts of speech tagging example, the matrix A, for example, will be a very big matrix. The matrix could look like this. And what we could do is we could say the first row represents how I transition from a start symbol into something else. The second one represents nouns. The third one verbs and so on, tunk, 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 okay? And then the columns here, here we've got a noun column, a verb column, and maybe determiners, tunk, 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 up to uh, end of sequence um, um, column there. And then, for example, this element, this element could correspond to something like the probability of a noun given that I started a sequence. Okay, this probability here would be the probability of a verb, given that I've started the sentence. This probability here would be the probability of sampling a verb, or getting a verb, given that the preceding thing was a noun. Okay, are you guys with me? So you can store all those probabilities in a little transition probability matrix. Okay, the emission distributions, like I said, that would depend on whether you've got continuous variables or discrete variables. But if you're sticking with our part of speech, um, little example here, then um, the emission distributions, you can actually all stack them all up into a matrix as well. What that matrix would look like is, let's just take nouns for instance. So we've got a, a row corresponding to nouns. And then we say, okay, given that I'm in the noun state, what's the probability of uh, art fark, which is weirdly very often the first uh, word in, in most English dictionaries because it's got the double A. It also comes from Afrikaans or Dutch. Okay, artvark. What's the probability of artvark given that I'm in a noun? That would be that value there. What's the probability of the word A given that I'm in a noun? That would be this um, thing here. What's the probability of the word cat given that I'm in a noun? That would be that value there and so on. Okay. And then you have, so you can think of this, you've got a little, this is really a distribution over noun. So you could even write something like this, but that first row is a row of the noun probabilities. That would stack in there, okay? And then we would have a second row for verb, which would tell you, okay, for instance, this value here would be the probability of A given that I'm in the verb, verb state, okay, and so on. So you end up with a very big matrix and determiners, and pronouns and so on, all of them, and you've got a different distribution for each of them. Does that make sense? Just a very concrete example of, um, for the part of speech um, example that we're looking at. Okay, so you guys now know how to define a hidden Markov model and how to mathematically write it out and actually also how to save it. So if it's just a discrete HMM, then you, you just have to save basically two matrices in, in, in Python and you've actually defined uh, a hidden Markov model.